Hey guys, it's Beth, and today I just have a really quick tutorial for you. Someone had asked me how I made my pinwheels, and so I thought I'd do a quick video on how I made these, since I just did my K and Company video last week, I thought I'd go ahead and jump in with this one. And my daughter has become obsessed with pinwheels, so we have made several, and she is going to be helping me with this tutorial to show you how easy it is to make the pinwheels. But if you have any questions, because I'm going to jump to a voiceover, so if you have any questions on anything, let me know. Otherwise, I will try to leave some brief instructions down in the description box, and then we'll kind of talk you through the rest of the process in the video. Hope you guys enjoy. Thanks. Ellie is going to get us started today. She's going to make the first pinwheel, and you just want to start with a square piece of paper. Double-sided works really well, so you can enjoy both sides on this project. The size of the square doesn't matter. It's whatever... It depends on the size of the pinwheel that you want. We are using a three by three inch square. And then you are basically just going to cut towards the center of your square, but not all the way in. So imagine a circle, kind of a going an invisible circle going around the center point of your square. You want to cut to the outer edge of that circle, but not through it. Because you want to end up with four triangular flaps that are all still attached there at the center. So you can see she's got a flap that she cut in, but it's still attached. So you just do that same thing all the way around, cutting towards center to the edge of your little invisible circle. And so there are your four little flaps. And so now she's showing you that they're still attached and that if you fold it just right, it kind of looks like a bow. And then it looks like a starship or one of the X-Wings from Star Wars. <laughs> so I guess it depends on, the, you know, how you want to use your pinwheel. There are apparently multiple uses. So I suggest putting a little bit of adhesive there in the center of your pinwheel just to help hold all of your points together once you fold them in. And then you take your one of your triangular flaps and pick one side. So she did the left side and folded that point up towards the center. And then you go to your next triangular flap and you take the same side of the flap that you used on the last one and fold it up. So then you just keep working around doing that same side of the triangle up towards the center. And that gives you the pinwheel. So she's just doing kind of a very simple embellishment in the center. She's just got a punch circle and it's already on a glue dot. So that will also help hold her points down there in the center. And then she's going to embellish that a little bit more with a tiny little flower punch. And that's it. A few minutes, your pinwheel's done. Like I said, Ellie has become obsessed with these and she loves just sitting and making these like mass production. So there you go, quick and easy. So I'm going to show you kind of a slightly different way to do it. If you want to add brads, I'm gonna kind of add a brad at the end of mine. And again, just to show you how Quick and easy they are. I'm cutting towards the center of my square. This is also a three inch square. So I'm cutting in, but not all the way. And then I'm going to take one side and fold it up. It doesn't matter which side of that flap that you start with, as long as you continue on that, using that same side all the way around. And because I'm using a brad, I'm going to overlap my flap, my points there in the center a little bit. 
If all you're using is a brad, you want to make sure that you're overlapping the points. If you're going to put something else, like I'm going to be using another circle punch, it doesn't matter how much they overlap. But I'm just using a little bit of Tombow Mono liquid glue here just to kind of help hold my points down. Even if you're using a brad by itself to close, I would suggest doing a little bit of glue just to help hold it together. Glue dots work as well. So here I'm just putting another little cardstock circle punch at the center just to add a little bit. And I'm going to use a little tiny flower punch as well. <coughs> and even though I'm going to be adding a brad again, I wanted everything to kind of stay in place while I get the brad in. So I could stop here like Ellie did and it would be just fine. Instead of this or brad, you could also add some other like dimensional circle embellishment, enamel dots, whatever. So here I'm just using kind of a foam craft mat and then a piercing tool. Both are from Provocraft. I've had them forever. And the piercing tool basically is just like a needle that pokes through the paper. And depending on the size of your brad, that's the size of hole you need. I'm using a tiny little brown brad here with little prongs, so I didn't need a very big hole. If you're using a bigger brad, like one of the flower brads that I'll show you here in a minute, and the prongs are wider, you'll probably need to push the piercing tool further in or punch a bigger hole, whatever method you're using to get your hole. Push the prongs down. <clears throat> and then this pinwheel's done too. Again, very quick, very easy. You can add these to cards. You can add these to scrapbook pages. You can use the brad to attach them to a straw and make a little pinwheel embellishment, you know, pinwheel that spins. Here are some two inch ones where I actually just use the brad to hold it together. And you can see the difference in the size between the two and the three inch squares that we used. So just a few different varieties. Like I said, a great way to use up your scraps. And they're really fun. But I hope you guys enjoyed this quick little tutorial. Ellie did great. She loves making them. I'm most happy to show you that. So thanks for your time today and have a crafty week.